And our superstar guest has made a film about himself, which is a good thing because it stops him from doing things like this. I love a walk on. Do you? Oh, Big crowd for you like tonight, there, girl. On. Thank you. Normally, everyone. nobody stays on a Friday. Yeah, We're all in the pub. To... Is that right? <laughs> it's true. <laughs> um, let's get back to Miranda. Miranda, wasn't that lovely? Yes. What was going on there? And were the tents involved? It was so minty. How did it happen? How did it come about? Um, she she emailed me a thing and said, here's a crazy idea, and I said, absolutely no way on earth. And then I got an email about three months later saying, no, we're really desperate now, we haven't got anything going on in this episode, will you be in it? And I fell up for it, so I thought, yeah, let's do it. And that's how you get 10 million viewers. Desperation. And we had no rehearsal whatsoever. Well, you're a perfectionist. We heard you were rehearsing for like three days for that No case. way. Come on. No way. How many takes? Uh, we actually did it twice, just because I wanted to kiss her again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Lunchboxes. Would you like one, Gary? We made you know Are you hungry? It's Gary Barlow Oh, look nice at that. That's probably Beautiful. worth a bomb, actually. Yeah, we think they're <laughs> knocking a few of these out. You know what I mean? OK. I'm sure we had proper ones when we were in Take That originally. Yeah, of course you did. Proper lunchbox. You had one, didn't you? I did have one. I had a Snoopy <laughs> one, a Barbie one, yeah. and something else before that as well. Did but you have packed lunch for school? Did yeah, you? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we did. My mum used to get up in the morning frozen pasties, put them in the oven, and then oh, she split them open and put ketchup inside. We reseal them, because that's what mums do. Yeah. Amazing. Oh. Don't you think so? Did you Love used to it. have packed lunch? Uh, definitely. I used to have a penguin. Man. I used Remember to have a penguin. penguin. Amazing. And I'd always eat the penguin and leave the apple. Uh, I used to eat the penguin and leave the sandwiches. All right, moving on to your live <laughs> DVD. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Gary Barlow, the live DVD. It arrives on our desk this afternoon, yes. didn't in the office. We went straight to our favourite menu, the extras menu, right? Isn't that always the way? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. And we challenge any DVD this year to have a better extra than this. Surely we must be inside. was capable of singing and dancing to that standard. Well, it's extremely brave, I think, dancing next to an athlete like me to start with. Completely. Um, but, you know, the funniest thing was when James come round to my house to rehearse that sequence, I said to him, this is going to be really funny, isn't it? And he was like, no, I'm really serious. I've been dying <laughs> to do this for years and years. It's my ambition. And he was very, very serious about it. But lovely voice as well. Amazing voice, yeah. But because he nailed it, it was so much better than it being funny, wasn't it? Exactly, exactly. And it, brilliant. He just did the one song, because you could see him chomping at the bit to stay on for another couple. Yeah, he could have done half an hour, definitely. But no, it was a lot of fun on the night. So how many rehearsals for that, though? You're in your house. Yeah, we did a Sunday hours? morning at my house. Um, so he kind of, that, this was the worrying thing. He sort of knew it already. It was like he'd done it through he his teenage that a lot, years. He does though, yeah. Yeah, but it yeah, took us a morning and then we'd run it two or three times on the night. It was great. Right, so take Good. that, make them back this year, make them back next year, maybe the year after. You know, who knows if everybody's going to be available. Obviously, James could be available. Well, now we have someone we could slot in yes. so easily. Sam. Who else secretly can do it that you know about, that you could tell us about? Who, who can knock a tune out? Who can knock a tune? Yeah. What, comedian-wise? Well, just, well, you know, people who you wouldn't expect to be able to do that. People you've met along the way. Who's been round to your house singing around the piano is what we want to yeah, know, that's isn't what it, we basically? You're going to put me on the spot here now. I can't think of anybody. Um, do you know, what we're doing at the moment in Take That is we're, we're actually training all our kids up for when we very can't wise. do it oh, any longer. Very Osmond. And they can just take over. Like yeah. a pension? Yeah, that's it. 
Yeah, it's about time they were doing something. <laughs> like he needs one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nicole Scherzinger, she popped along as well, didn't she? Yeah, we had lots of guests on that night. We had a... It was in Manchester, which was great. Hometown gig, great audience. We had Nicole on, we had Mark Owen on, we had James on, we had Peter Kay on. It was just a brilliant night. What a night. So, yeah. which song did Peter Kay do? Well, we did... <laughs> We did a medley of TV themes. Oh, I see. <laughs> which he is obsessed with. And when, when we originally came up with the list of songs, I mean, honestly, he came up with about 60, and we had to pick four, so... No, yeah, he does that, doesn't he? Yeah. He over-delivers all the time. Absolutely. Which is why he's so good, of yeah. course. Yeah. So, um, when say that split up first time, yep. you went out solo, and it sort of worked, and then sort of ultimately didn't work. This time... What you going to say? Well, you know what happened, <laughs> don't you? You know what happened. That's yeah. what happened. Yep. And this time it's gone gangbusters. What's been the difference, do you think? Um, do you know what? I've got to be honest, this time around, in general, everything I've done, I've really, really enjoyed it. And I think it's because I appreciate it, because I was basically out of work for five years when it all ended for me the first time around. So this time, I really enjoy every moment, and I think that's why, I, you know, it's, 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 it's Comes always across. worked. Because yeah. Yeah. people know, don't they? I think so. I, I love it. And especially with this tour I did last year, I think... The, the, the amazing bit about it was I didn't need to. I, wasn't, I had nothing to, to promote. I hadn't toured for 13 years. I just felt like doing some gigs. Good for you. And, yeah. and that was the reason. I just wanted to have some fun and play live. Mm. Is X Factor one of the things you enjoy doing? Last year, I, I thought it was a lot of fun last year. And, and ultimately, when I look at any of these shows, you know, did we find talent? We really did. James Arthur was an incredible winner. Yeah, he I think was. he sold more singles than any other... X Factor winner, so we did find a star, and that's the idea of the show. So I really enjoyed last year. Right, I've got to ask you this: the one-year feud, rumored one-year feud with Simon Cowell. Is there a feud? feud? There's no feud. It, okay, oh, okay, brilliant. Here's our next question: uh, Any of the front-page <laughs> stories, the soap opera stories about any of them about X Factor, true? All true. Apart from that one, obviously. Okay, we've got three facts, and we we don't expect you to answer. No, we? We just, just, just look we're at just going to look at your face. Okay. If camera phones just read come me. in at this yeah, point, yeah. and then we'll see. Okay. So, has Talisa quit, or has she been pushed? Just look. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. I think I've got that one, don't you? Yeah, I All think right. so. Is it true that Robbie is going to guest judge on the next series? <laughs> mm. Nailed that one. Will Mel B be making the tea on the next series? That's a definite. All right, good. Uh, the Gary Barlow live DVD <laughs> is out on Monday. I'm a good guest, aren't I? <laughs> you are. Don't say anything. Oh, you say it all through the eyes, there, Gary. <laughs> now, Chris here yeah, has been to New York recently, but you didn't even know, did you? Not a clue. No. He joined these teenagers from Priestland School in Limington on this school trip. Now, here he is, ice skating. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then on the Statue of Liberty. Thank you. Yeah, they even took him into the cockpit of the plane. Aww. It's the best I've ever looked. Yeah. So, Jill, you're the teacher, you're leading the charge here. So, the question is why? Well, we're all huge Chris Evans fans. He makes us smile on the radio every morning and, of course, on The One Show on Friday, and we're huge fans of The One Show. So we got ourselves a knitted Chris, Aww. and we decided it was time to take The One Show stateside and introduce Chris and The One Show to New York, which we did. Well, thank you very much. A, nice. a knitted Chris is... Uh, the wife thinks that, that's, my, that's the way forward. A full-size knitted me. Evening, sweetheart. <laughs> right, that wasn't all though. Jill and her gang went on to plug the one show on the big boards in Times Square. They did. What about that? Yeah, so their efforts got us thinking. So new for 2013, we would like you to take the one show with you wherever you go in the world and send us the proof. Yes, it? please do. Now to Marks and David say, what better song to celebrate than the green, green grass of home? Yes, but sadly Sir Tom wasn't available for comment because he's been really busy today appearing in Cardiff's St David's Day Parade. Here he is. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, that's not the real yeah. Tom. That was indeed lovely. But there were angry scenes at the filming location. What happened there, Keris? It was a very special day for a young lady. It was her birthday, yes. and we had been running late because there was a certain Arsenal Bayern Munich match on, and we were in Islington. Oh, traffic at Sandstill. <laughs> so we didn't want her to. Well, basically, we were in her, on her table. So while we were filming, so we thought it'd be nice to sing a happy birthday to, to let her know it was her day, her special. Because she day, booked the room, the same filming. as you. She booked the room she, next, was, yeah, and you was, encroached on her birthday. We were on her table, you know. It can't happen. Pushed so. over all the straws and the blancmange, and I she was just she waiting. Came, she came up, um, up in the end. Yeah, yeah. Happy birthday, Polly. Yeah. Happy, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Polly. 
Happy birthday to you. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it all ended happily ever after, didn't it? Perfect. Yeah, I think, uh, yes, yeah, because we were recording for The Voice there, you know, so hopefully she's a fan of that as well, so she didn't mind too much. No, well, she, I think she came too. off well. Too. She was all right. <laughs> we stayed after for the blancmange. Um, <laughs> How did you? could you not? <laughs> yes. And um, so, so back to what the film's all about. Then there are other examples of songs that they're not about what we think they may be. Yeah, about. because I was just saying now to Gary, um, that song. Some people don't clock straight away that it's actually a song sung by a man on death row. Mm. You know, because we're all just singing about our homes, our yeah. grass. There are other examples. Oh, if here I we go. Here we go. Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I just happen to have this handy, so um, hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully you'll recognize it. Every breath you take, every move you make, I'll be watching you. The police. And uh, every bond you break, every step you take, I'll be watching you. So some people love that song, thinking it's a great love song. They've chosen it for their wedding. Actually, it's a bit more sinister because he wrote it during his divorce. Mm -hmm. So it's really a bit like Big Brother. I'm going to keep an eye on you. I'm going to be it's watching. It's not romantic you. at all. It's not. Oh, that's sinister. I didn't. I completely didn't <laughs> well, get that. that. We're, not, yeah. we're never playing that one again then. Yeah. That's that off the yeah. playlist. Right, what okay. next? You can hear the gothicness of it though, can't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Every move you make. Uh, another one. You'll hopefully recognise this one as well. Okay. Born in the USA, I was. One chord one, Born in a Bruce Springsteen. You're proud uh, to be American. A patriotic song, or is it? No, not quite that simple. Because, um, I mean, Ronald Reagan was fooled as well. He wanted it as his campaign song. Um, but it's actually written uh, about the Vietnam War. It's an anti war song by Bruce Springsteen. Right, okay. That's it. So the Americans are all getting that wrong. You know, they think it's just a pure, you know, nationalistic sort of song, but no, it's got a bit more depth right. yeah. than that. So, um, but there are other songs that are not um, so, um, you know, they don't have such hidden meanings. Um, my favourite country song, my favourite title of all time is this one. Um, You're the reason our kids are ugly. <laughs> Charming. Don't but take it personally, Gavin. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but looks ain't everything, and money ain't everything, and I love you just the same. Oh, I see. It's uh, Loretta Lynn and Conway Twitty, but what a title. You're the reason our kids are ugly. Okay, well, of course, little bit. We've got a minute left with you, Kerry. Um, tell us about the random green carpet. Well, can you, can you sort of yeah. green carpet next to you there. <laughs> I know, and I thought, I thought I'd bring this along. Um, this is actually, uh, talk about green, green grass of home. Yes. This is the green, green carpet of, so, uh, Even of home. Even though it's quite yellow now. now, isn't it? Well, his career's got brighter, the carpet has faded. OK. Um, this, <laughs> was, this was apparently the carpet in um, Tom Jones's flat hmm. when he was living in Shepton oh. Studios or near there. Um, if he felt homesick, he could go up to the top level of his house and just uh, think of the green, green grass of home. And he bought that to celebrate the hit. And we've just seen a black and white photograph there to try and prove <laughs> it's black and white, so it's quite inconclusive. Yeah, but what is, what is it about the 1960s and singers Elvis as well? Have you been to the Jungle Room in Grace? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, Grace Have Sands. you got any hit themed rooms at your house, Gal? Do you know what? This is, uh, I think, the problem with all these double meanings with songs. Mine just mean what they are. I'm not deep enough, am I? I need to get deeper. Oh, I must, think he's okay. Uh, no, I think you're doing all right. I think you're doing fine, Gal, to be honest. There must be one take that lyric that means something different nothing. to what people. Alex, nothing. nice try. But <laughs> nothing. nothing. They just mean what they, they do, what they say all on right. the tin. Paddling pool, not the deep end. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Ke Ke sorry, yeah, no, I was just going to say, Care is welcome to the One Show family because oh, you're going to do you. some more stuff for us as well. That's very interesting, that stuff. That's the first of a hundred films you're going to do for us, isn't it? Millions, hopefully. Okay. No, thanks. No, thanks for inviting me along. Um, I'm going to be going around the country, um, especially looking at the landscape and seeing how they've influenced literature, books, and meeting people as well, and hopefully some music and all well, sorts of stuff. Oh, it's great. nice to have a fellow Welshie on the programme. And thank you. Double the daffodils. Yeah, thank Shall we have an awe for the whales? Aww. There's your Friday awe. Wales. Okay, uh, right, thanks so much to Gary and to Keris. There Thank you go. Round of applause for our guests this evening. Yeah. 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 Yeah.